Welcome everyone. I know folks are filing in. Welcome to Quick Tips for Collaboration and Stronger Songs. We're super excited to get started. Uh, so I'm Paulina Vo. I'm Director of Client Services here at SongTrust. And Andre, why don't you give us a little bit of an introduction? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I'm Crystal Lee. Uh, started out as a songwriter. I went to Berkeley College of Music. I was very, very lucky to get to go there right out of high school. And when I graduated from Berkeley, I moved to Nashville because uh, I, I knew that I wanted to work as a songwriter and I didn't care how. So went to Nashville to try to learn how that town worked and stayed there about a decade and wrote for various publishing companies, did the staff writer thing. Um, and then after that, I went to LA and uh, ended up uh, starting a family um, and uh, began uh, teaching, wrote a book on lyric writing. Um, I now teach for Berkeley College of Music's online program and for University of Southern California's pop music program um, and write and produce in collaboration uh, with a few companies out in LA. So it's, um, it's fun. It's, you know, it's, it's not what I expected and it's more and it's less and you know all of that that good stuff so I run a uh, creative consultancy retreat um, program and so we do physical retreats um, our first one is in September uh, in okay. New York and then we have retreats in Nashville and and LA in the future and online retreats for the time being due to COVID uh, so yeah. that's me in a nutshell very cool very cool songwriting retreats are amazing I'm excited to hear more about how it goes for you as well. I feel like it's such a cool environment to be creative in and really escape, you know, whatever your day to day is. It's, a, it's like a very calming experience. Um, so and that's very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that you were a staff writer too. So I'm just adding my anecdotes here. I love yeah. that you're a staff writer. I feel like that's such a, um, it's very different now, of course, uh, but that's so cool to hear. I love it. Yeah, yeah very lucky to have done that. Oh yeah, so cool. Um, all right, well, we're gonna jump into a little bit of the agenda for today. So we're gonna discuss the importance of collaboration, how it can help expand your song repertoire. We're gonna talk about developing your own system for writing creatively and boosting your lyric skills by learning about effective collaboration strategies and learn what to look for when choosing a collaborator. Um, Andrea is gonna give us all of her wisdom in, in all of those things. And by the way, Andrea, feel free to let me know when to go to the next slide, but are you ready to get started? Yeah, let's, let's go. Um, I think a really great place to start would be this question. Why should you collaborate, you personally? What draws you to collaboration? And then also, if you can dig down and think, what makes me resist the idea of sharing my work with others, sharing the load with others, and even you know allowing them to contribute to my vision? It can be a very vulnerable thing. And it's very reasonable to have had some not so great experiences, whether that be really challenging personalities or if it's more along the lines of, you know, I just feel like the songs I write, the music I make is not as strong when I allow uh, someone else's vision to kind of fingerprint on what I'm trying to do. So those are the things um, that I'm interested in learning. So if everybody wouldn't mind, if you have something to share, post it in the chat box. I'd love to see what's on your mind with regard to collaboration. I love that. Yeah. I, I love that you also mentioned the sharing of feelings. It's so hard. Yes, it is hard. It is hard. Um, so honestly, as we continue to talk about this, I've got the chat box open and that helps to guide me towards what can I say that's really on point to what you're wanting to know. Um, yes. So let's go, let's go to the next slide. Yeah. And I'll keep referring back to the chat box as things come up. So why do we collaborate? Yes, I love what Andrea is saying. It's a way to shore up my weaknesses with others' strengths. This only works if you're writing with someone who has strengths where you know that you have weaknesses. And so one thing that we need to do is understand where our strengths are, and then sometimes deliberately choose people who do not duplicate those strengths. 
um, is sometimes then there's, you know, the lyrics are, meh, the lyrics are sort of iffy, but the music is great, you know? Um, and sometimes the, the other way around, maybe uh, maybe what you really need is a vocalist who can really make life from, from what you're making. So what Andrew was saying is very much about expanding your style and having access to skills that you don't have. I think, um, you know, that's a, a very reasonable thought to go out and try to find people who can add to what you do rather than duplicate what you do. But, you know, it's nice to say, but then we have to first identify what are we really good with? What's the strength? And, um, you know, when you're working in an industry like Nashville and you're, or, or even in LA, anywhere that there's a concentration of um, highly skilled musicians, highly skilled because they've been doing it for a long time, right? You've had a lot of experience failing and trying it again and trying it again and being in the room with, with others who are doing it well. Um, I think this is why um, people get so good. People become pros because you're in an environment that facilitates that. So I always like to say, it's not that people who succeed uh, to, to a level to which you would say, oh, you must be a pro writer. It's not that they're so much more talented. You have had the opportunity to observe other people doing it well. And by therefore, you're able to see, wow, I find that part really difficult. Writing lyrics scares me. Or, gee, my melodies, you know, after a while, you start to realize what your melodies do and what they don't do. Um, what your limitations with uh, laying down a chord progression or a groove are. And when you're in such a concentration of people willing and wanting to collaborate, you have lots of options. But when you're not in those environments, then you know it can get difficult to unearth the kind of people that are who have the same vision as you do about how you want that project to sound in the end, who have the skills that are actually um, you know good for you, and and dare I say who are sometimes as knowledgeable or talented in the area that you are where they can lift you up instead of just sort of neutralize what you do well. So we don't want that. Mm -hmm. Collaborators expand our style in a place like Nashville or LA or you know New York, Atlanta. You're in an, in an area where you don't necessarily have to make such intentional decisions about who to collaborate with. You just do it every day and every day and sometimes it's not a good match, sometimes it is. So the concentration is so so great that you you get it done. Mm -hmm. I think when we are trying to find collaborators and it takes some extra legwork, that's where understanding your strengths and understanding what you're looking for can be a beautiful thing. So for example, let's say that um, here in uh, the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, I want to find, uh, I, I really want to produce a record I want to put out maybe an EP, something, something for myself as an artist. Okay. So the challenge is, uh, who am I as an artist? You know, what, what is my brand? What is my sound? And to just kind of randomly invite a collaborator in there to help you define that sound, that's a huge task. That's huge. You know, mm -hmm. artists do this over, over a period of time with great musicians. So a way to do this, it could be that you identify a local band whose uh, guitar player or bass player is um, producing a sound in their projects that for some reason you like. And so they become a collaborator for you. And you, so you're going to kind of approach this as what do I envision that I'm going to sound like? Who can I bring in that captures that? And sometimes you have to pay for things, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's a much better thing to say, you know what? I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna get uh, lessons with a guitar uh, teacher who can really pull off the kind of sound I'm going for, which will take a little legwork. Uh, community colleges, colleges, universities, just, you know, find those people. And I'm gonna learn to play my songs with the influence of someone who brings great groove, you know, maybe, I don't write up tempo. Maybe that's my problem is, gosh, I sit down and it's all a ballad all the time. You know, look at the problem that you're facing and then really start to troubleshoot. What do I need? Maybe it's not just as simple as a drum loop. Maybe logic isn't doing it for me because I'm still on my own. 
it's always this process of identifying other people who are going to get uh, get what you do, and then uh, add an element that excites you. And it doesn't have to be another songwriter. It could be a vocalist. It could be um, a poet who gets what you're trying to, to emulate musically, who just in the room or via email, whatever it is, um, is able to key into the message in the music and translate it into words. And then the two of you kind of work it out. Um, so know your strengths and know what you need as to not duplicate your strengths, but to expand your style and give you a skill set available to you that you didn't have. I mean, if you think about it like an entrepreneur, businesses outsource all the time. It is simply not reasonable to expect yourself to write the quintessential melody, great grooves and execute them really well, fantastic and interesting and ever-changing chord progressions, great lyrics that are both hooky and artistic. You know, if, if you feel like there's a some some uh, baggage with that language. I mean, like get real. We need other people to, you know, to produce um, the music that we generally aspire to produce when we've been doing this for a while. Because I think that's, you know, that's an, an, another thing is when you sit in a room by yourself all the time, you begin to sound like yourself. And that is both a beautiful thing and a challenging thing because it's, it's helping you to hear what your style is and no collaboration is gonna take that completely away. And that's your superpower, is your unique presence when it comes to your groove vocabulary, um, the words you tend towards, the storylines you gravitate towards, the things you know that you write about, the genre you find yourself in, you know? Um, but you know, you, sounding like yourself over and over and over again can be a very stale place to live creatively. And so a lot of times that's why people co-write so that you can have a constant reflection of what am I doing? Where can I go? You know, another big reason that people co-write um, is to get the songs to the artists. No better way than to write with the artists. So, I know in Nashville right now, that is a big change from where things were 15 years ago, where now um, you get on a record by writing with the artist a lot of times. And not to say that uh, it doesn't work the, the, the way it used to, where you just write a lot of tunes and, and um, hope to get pitched. But it's a powerful thing because a lot of times the artist in the room will have a way of saying things um, and delivering things that that's their way. and. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really hard to match that. Um, we collaborate to create a network. This is super important. Remember when I talked about um, maybe there's a local bass player, a local guitar player or teacher and player who um, you know that they are connected to the industry in a way that you're not. They have a different fan base, a different people that they enjoy working with. So I think um, particularly if you're uncomfortable with networking as a whole, using collaboration as a means for creating a community of people that you enjoy is a beautiful way to network. Just say, you know, I'm not gonna network anymore. I'm just gonna identify regular people in my area and online and, you know, the classes that I take, um, SunTrust webinars that I take, you know, and um, I'm going to set a goal to connect with two people every week. Just, you know, send out a little, send out an email, make a step forward toward, I mean, the worst they can say is I'm busy, right? Or, you know, kindly um, walk away. And that's fine. Let them, no problem. You have unlimited resources in people that you can invite into this beautiful musical journey that you're taking. And I think that get, that really gets back to what do I have to offer in the collaborative room? And I guarantee you, everybody here has something to offer, if not multiple things. And so when you walk into a room and you recognize, you know what, I think that I can offer um, really image 
thought-provoking lyric. That's something that I do. Or, uh, you know what, I, always, I often write chorus first. Hooks just come to me. I'm pretty, I'm good with titles. Um, I sing a lot of covers. Um, I'm, pr I'm pretty good with, you know, I write high energy tunes generally. I'm, I'm good with that. That is such an asset. So you need to start really looking at what you bring as a true asset. Um, I think there's often the pressure to, to feel like, oh, I got to be useful in the room. You know, clarify going in, you know, even say that in the room. Um, I've got some hooks that I would love to throw out there or I've got some riffs that I think are pretty cool and you know if you like any of them it'd be great to build them out a bit further um so I think in communicating with the people that we're in the room with uh there's a few things that we can do to enable them to know how to help how to enter into a project that we've already got started let's go to the next slide I guess I'll kind of surprise myself yeah collaboration strategies um all right and and the next slide yeah okay so very specifically now what can we do to enable the song that comes out of collaborating with someone else to um to be better um i've had a lot of song fails in the room you know i i don't know why but don schlitz and i we write a lot of songs that we like that you know didn't really go anywhere <laughs> which is funny because Don Schlitz wrote The Gambler and I had I, I met him in Nashville at the Bluebird and I said you're Don Schlitz and he said I know and I said I would love to write with you <laughs> and he and amazing. looked at me and I, I started to say okay sorry I am so and so and I you know I met Alamo Irving and he said I know and I said oh and then the whole thing just bloomed out of there but what an interesting cool guy to sit down and write with. Um, and we didn't, we wrote very lyric heavy songs, very introspective, you know, mm -hmm. uh, nothing necessarily in the pulse of the commercial vein that we were going for at the time. So, you know, songs can be just, and collaborations can be steps along the way. You don't know what is gonna be uh, resulting in something that, that would be a cut or very productive, but they always lead you to the next contact. The neck again, it's about building your network. But what can you do in the room? A lot of these things come from being in the room with a lot of great writers over the years and observing what they do. Um, and so one of the things top left here, sensory writing while they talk. This is particularly useful if you're in the room with an artist and not only uh, someone who sings covers, but somebody who writes, who is an artist. When you can load the song up with things that that artist would say, um, you have a much better chance of uh, connecting with what makes that artist excited about their songs, right? If you're saying things as they would say them. And so if you've ever done something called object writing, where you, um, you write about an object or a place like at a bus station, or a thing like a grandma's teacup. And you write about that object, place, or even person through your senses, taste, touch, sight, sound, smell, and movement. And you do this regularly. It's focused journaling really, where th what comes out can actually be very useful for lyrics. So you're exposing your perspective on things that you know and allowing that to not just be fun little inspiration that then you go over here and you write the song. You use those ideas to write the lyric of the song and you fill in what you don't like or what you're missing. So when you're working with an artist, if you ask that artist, which you know a lot of times we do, so what are you thinking about? What do you wanna write? And in, you know they might say, well, I don't know, or well, I've been working on this idea. Um, being able to ask them more questions to reveal how they're thinking, how they're feeling, things that they remember, um, um, you know, be able to do reflective listening where you say, well, why do you think that? What do you think happened in your life or what's happened recently to make you believe that? Um, you know, what you're really doing when you're writing with an artist is you're saying, what can we write? 
that expresses to your audience who you are. And that's a big task, right? That song, ref it, it defines who the artist is to their audience. Um, and so you want to get it right. And as long as you can continue to allow the artist to control those thoughts, those feelings, um, and then you're writing feverishly or typing like crazy or recording it while they speak so that you can go in there, listen back, lift out titles, lift first lines of lyrics, lift more than just first line, lots of lines of lyric, but they can come directly from the conversation. Have you ever had this experience where you um, you play a song and then people ask, uh, <laughs> so what does the song mean? You know, what inspired this? It's usually because they don't quite get it. The, the, the lyric is a little cryptic still. And then you explain, well, what it was about. And you're so fluent as you describe what you wanted the song to say. And then if you really think about it, it's like, well, why didn't I just say that? Yeah. Why didn't I just say that in the lyric? So that's what I'm talking about is allowing your natural inclination towards expressing yourself with words to be the actual lyric. And then it's a matter of just tightening it up, finding rhymes, things like this that we can do. Um, but I find that to be a really great technique in the room with others. Um, asking big picture questions for choruses and bridges. Verses are where you tell the nuts and bolts of the story. You give details. You set the scene, for example. But the chorus says, because of all that, here's what I think and believe. You know, It's the summarizing language. It's the, you're gone. I don't think I can, I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna get through because you're gone. But the verse is, she grabbed the keys, um, front door slammed as she ran out, you know, um, gravel skidded down the, down the driveway. Um, all that's left is a dust cloud because you're gone, right? So the chorus is the big message and bridges tend to do that too, the moral of the story um, I should have done this, I should have done that, or I'm going to go, I'm going to find you, whatever it takes, right? It's big picture language. Um, so even if you're in the room with, uh, with someone, you can think about and ask, put that question in the room, like, what are we really trying to get at here? What are we saying? And have you ever noticed as you're talking through an idea with someone, it's very, it's, it's exciting at first and very clear what the uh, what many titles that we work with or concepts are trying to say. It's after we've worked with the clay of that for a while that we can, well, now we're at the stage where we have to decide how to say it and what sticks and what doesn't. And I find that, and I love this, uh, Dennis's, um, well, let's see, who put storyboarding? Okay, song trusted panelist, storyboard, yeah. Um, that's great. This idea of storyboarding would be almost taking that first 20 minutes of inspiration when you and your partner are like, yeah, and we could say this, and yeah, I know how that feels, and you're ping-ponging ideas. Write them out as if, yeah, this, this idea is great for the verse, doesn't it? Because it sounds like an example of how the chorus message is so true. Pop it in there. I think what happens is we try to edit and structure a song as we're coming up with ideas. And so then we get stalled because that editing and structuring phase takes takes a while sometimes. And so to try to manage both of those things, the brainstorming and the editing and structuring at the same time gets real tricky. So don't put so much pressure on yourself. Write down the uh, storyboarding, right? Here's the verse, here's the chorus, here's the verse, here's the chorus. It can all change. It's not set in stone, but it's at least uh, uh, laid out so you can recall what felt good initially. I think another thing that happens in co-writes, and I say this, commit to the good ideas. <laughs> As you talk about an idea for an hour and then two hours, you know all the backstory. It's hard sometimes to remember that your listener would not have known what you talked about for two hours. And so there it's easy again to become cryptic with the actual lyric because you know what you mean when we're using those beautiful metaphors that mean nothing to the rest of us. It's nonsense. So um, 
there I think again, this, this outlining or sketching or storyboarding can be so helpful because it reminds you how you understood the idea before you became an expert. Your listener is not an expert, they're just people. Um, so outlining the song, defining the chorus message and the sound and sticking to uh, stick to commercially accessible writing. These are kind of similar. Um, when you're collaborating with someone else, it's very possible that they're hearing the idea in context of a musical groove or mood that they're not telling you, right? Another hallmark of professional writers is that they're highly productive, but no wonder. When you're in Nashville and you're writing in the room with someone, you know what commercial country sounds like. You know the parameters of your genre. Now you're constantly trying to you know, push that, um, but it's not like writing in the room with an artist who's not yet established as far as their sound and their brand. That's so much harder, I can tell you, because uh, you kind of don't know where you're aiming. And so therefore it's hard to commit to ideas because you don't have a clear sense of what you're evaluating the song on. What's a good lyric if you're an independent artist? It's whatever you like. It's whatever your art, your audience feels is a pungent, concentrated version of you. And hopefully that's not Taylor Swift because we all already have a Taylor Swift. So I think being an independent artist is such a noble and difficult thing because uh, you, you really are an entrepreneur in the largest, truest sense. So as much as you can get on the same page with your collaborator using a guide song saying, you know, I'm thinking this is the groove, this is the tempo and what we're feeling is the emotional message, all right? Is it a little aggressive? Is it a little um, sharp it, or is it chill and just vibing, you know? So if you can bring in a guide song, much like you would if you were meeting with a producer to try to express some elements of what you like, um, communicate that to your collaborator. Um, if they're giving you, here's, here's a chorus I'm writing, you know, um, they might not be aware of how, uh, how they, they seem. And you could say what genre they might best fit in. You might be making assumptions about that they understand this, but they might not. Um, and so if you can play them some examples of, you know what, when you, when, when you play that, it reminds me of this vibe. Is that the vibe you're going for? Um, yeah, Rob, the, the music video, what would it look like? The, the, the tones, um, how it looks visually, like I said, draw from text, art, or mixed media um, can be just another way to elicit the feelings that um, characterize the singer and therefore, you know, the singer's brand, how they are appearing to their audience. Um, when you write with a clear ex uh, commercial accessibility, um, it can be easier to evaluate what works and what doesn't with regard to lyric, what words would be too far out or cliche, um, you know, what concepts have been written about over and over and over again. Um, so, you know, communication and making as many um, attempts to get on the same page as your collaborator right away before you all get too far down the, the, the journey of the song can be real helpful. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I find too is writing what you or they know. Um, sometimes you, you know, you're in the room with an artist and you're writing about something that you would never write for yourself. So, um, and yet at the same time, they're writing with you because they don't wanna write like themselves all the time. So you do bring something. So I would just uh, encourage you not to leave who you are in the dust and try to become what you believe that writer needs you to be uh, because it, it might not be, it might not be at all that they need you to relinquish what makes you you. So again, going back to specific tools to get that done, like sensory writing while they talk and then working your magic to put the essential ideas that they said 
or the cool lines that just fell out of their mouth, you have a much keener sense of those than they do because they listen to themselves all the time. But you are useful in the room in being able to sift what is essential that they said to making their point. Um, so you're doing more structuring and editing rather than brainstorming at that point, which is totally great. Um, yeah, so leaning on your ability to help the collaborator guide their ideas for their song or to commit to both of you brainstorming at the same time. I've had all of us uh, doing some free writing and then we share and see, you know, just journaling, see what's really cool that comes out of that. And sometimes the song becomes something totally different because we all got excited about a new idea, you know? Love it. Um, Love it. Yeah, sorry. Am I missing? I'm probably missing things in the in the chat box here that would be so great to call out because oh. I'm sure so many people here have lots of experience. You know, people Cynthia, are coming in with they're saying everything. Yeah, yeah. Where do you go to find someone to collaborate who shares your vision? Right. I think as much of that uh, as you can do with intentionality, the better. So um, I would take a day or two days and just find people online who I think are really good and their project sounds like what I want to make something similar and I get to know everybody on that project um, allmusic.com right I'd see all the credits I'd know who who mixed who mastered it who played on it everything and over time you probably see some of the name same names coming up as you look through similar artists and, and get to know, again, the, the, the scene that defines what you want to be a part of. Um, again, when you're in a place like Nashville, in any music town, you have access to that scene. When you're not in a music town, you have to make, connect, make yourself make connections to that scene. Um, but even involving, you know, one person in your journey who plays in a manner that, um, they really understand the genre in which you want to work. They really capture the essence of. Um, it can be a lot cheaper than hiring a band and going into or hiring session players, right? Um, it can be a lot quicker than um, working uh, with someone um, who has a DAW, produces, you know, lays down all your tracks over time. Sometimes you're limited by their schedule and other projects they're working on, and that can be pretty frustrating. So when we're trying to define who we are, what we like to make and get feedback on that, I like to keep things, um, keep it manageable in terms of time. You can't take a year to finish a song. That's too long. Mm -hmm. You'll peter out. So combining um, how do I, what is the least that I can do in order to maximize the feedback I get so I can understand where my strengths are and um, the timeliness you know, of putting things out. So it could be that working with a guitar player, maybe that's your goal for the next two months. You're gonna go on a wild chase for the two players the two, and they could be guitar teachers, they could be people you find online, they could be people who have no name whatsoever, but they're perfect for what you need to do. Um, I know, you know, even at USC, um, in our uh, jazz program and pop program, oh my gosh, there's some great players, student players, you know? So um, I would never recommend uh, spending a lot of money as you're trying to determine what are some, what are my strong songs? Because the truth is, you know, you write a lot of songs and then you pick the strongest to actually uh, demo. But you're, as you're trying to figure out this, what do I sound like, who am I? Um, you know, keep it manageable. Finish a song, even if it's imperfect. You know, the first 20 seconds of a, of a song determine the, the sound, the mood, the way I feel when I'm gonna listen to it. It's not, you know, the third lyric line of the second verse that makes or breaks it, right? So just put stuff out there. And that's your calling card too for getting better and better collaborations happening. Um, so it's kind of like your absolutely. musical business card, right? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So 
I'm loving all the questions and all of the conversation here. We're we're sitting at 37 minutes in, Andrea. So let's, if you're okay with it, we can pull maybe two questions That's and good. then we'll probably have to wrap it up. Uh, but we've been we've been pulling this from the chat. I'm gonna pull one for the QA right now. Um Man, you dropped some gems, so many gems in there. I feel like I can grab some amazing quotes. Um, cool. Okay, this is an interesting question from Athena. Do you think it's important to follow trends uh, like a song without any rhyming? Or I'm assuming you're asking like a specific style of writing in that moment in time. Um, no, I don't, frankly. I think we try to, and then it just becomes a goose chase, you know? I, if I were to follow a trend, I would I would definitely not try to take that burden upon myself to figure out how to do it. I would collaborate with someone who's already on that trend because that's naturally who they are. I would say, you know, is it possible? Could we write a song? To, is, is there any way that I could have uh, two hours of your time? And um, I'd love to write a song uh, so I can understand this this trend. You know what I'm saying? I personally would rather... Uh, spend a hundred bucks to to uh, achieve a product, a song out of that, than six months trying to learn how to duplicate a trend. That's not really who I am anyway. But that that that's kind of that's a strong amazing. amazing. Yeah, I, I think as writers, we always uh, are just trying to to stay stay ahead of the game, right? So that's a very very cool way to look at that. Um, I think I'm going to grab one more question that came from the chat um, and then and take it from there. I don't know if you wanted to touch base on the last slide regarding what to look for in a collaborator. If you want to touch on that really quick before we take one more question. Yeah, you know, I feel like in a in a maybe a little haphazard way, we talked about that in terms of you must first understand yeah. what it is you need. Um, if you don't know what you need, yeah. hopefully you're in a environment in which you don't have to know what you need. You're just getting influenced by great writers, great musicians on all sides. Um, even saying, all right, I know I need to collaborate uh, in order to network and um, even just to have partners in moving through this process of writing and releasing music is a huge reason to collaborate because it's such a big a big thing to try to do. Um, and so finding people who can be co co-founders in that journey, you know, is such a, a help. So similar work ethic, that would be that, right? Maybe what you do yeah. together isn't um, necessarily going to go on either of your albums or it's not going to be the thing you do but maybe there's potential for branching out maybe you write with someone who you do something so different but it's so fun and so you make something that you can pitch in, in sync film tv maybe you've got multiple projects going on other people you write a, a different style and, and that's useful for another type of project you're doing but i think knowing what you do well what you bring to the table helps to um, find collaborators that can actually benefit you and makes it more worth your time. Um, some people are just great to have in the room because they keep things light and fun. And, you know, you look at the lyric or you look at the music and you're like, yeah, they just kind of backpacked on some of the ideas that were already there, but man, they made it a good time. That's great. And that's worth a lot. If you're that person who personality wise, you're just fun to work with. Um, I put up here too the ability to match words to a melodic stress pattern. That can be such a bummer to have a great melody and it's difficult to set words to, you know, or words and it's difficult to get it into a, a great melody. So a vocalist, you know, or um, who really has a sense for how you could phrase things. What a beautiful con contribution to a finished song. Um, so it can look a lot of different ways. That's amazing. Yeah, that's, uh, it's important to, especially writers who aren't vocalists that, to that point too. It's very interesting when you do have a vocalist in the room because you're like, oh wow, that lyric doesn't fit well there. Uh, right. Very cool. I'm gonna grab one more question that came a little bit earlier, but I think it's important. 
when is the best time to discuss what? And what is the best way to approach the topic? To discuss what? Sorry. What? Oh, split. Splits. Oh, yeah. Um, great question. Well, um, song splits in Nashville, 50, 50, 30, 30, 30, 33, whatever, even splits. And that's the assumption. So it would possibly be inappropriate to go in, into a session there and say, all right, I just want to make sure everybody knows I'm getting half of the song. So, um, you, you know, you can work it in. I, I definitely would always put relationship over um, having any uh, uh, really hard disagreements to work through with the song. And that same goes for, do I finish the song if I'm not liking where it's going with a collaborator? Um, all of those questions should go through the, the lens of how do I maintain a, a good relationship, a good working relationship here? Because in the end, that's what's going to stand the test of time. You never know. You never know how you can continue to work with this person or they work with people and bring others in. Um, so, you know, you, 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 you might feel like, gosh, I brought this idea into the collaboration and I feel like I wrote more of it. This other person didn't bring a whole lot. Um, that's fine. It's still uh, reasonable to determine a 50-50 split if you're comfortable with that. I've had uh, writers and I say, you know what, if this doesn't work out to the point where I'm, I'm really digging this song, we can do something with it. Is it okay if I take this title and, and write it myself? Always the answer is totally, totally. You know, writers are a little camp that you can depend on each other. But of course, you don't wanna do that to people all the time as, as if you're this high judge of whether the song is great or not. But again, this gets to be less and less of an issue when you're writing with people um, who are better than you are, <laughs> who bring a true contribution rather than just duplicate what you do. So if you're finding yourself in a position where you constantly have to um, you know, have these hard conversations, maybe you need to have a hard one with yourself and say, you know what, this isn't getting me anywhere. I need to set a goal that in four weeks, I'm gonna have found a collaborator, I, I, you know, from wherever, whether it's a, 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 again, an instrumentalist, a vocalist who's really great, this and that, who I can make good music with, who, you know, I'm the one in the room saying, I'm gonna do everything I can to make this great, you know? That's my yeah, thought. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. And I'm sure it goes without saying, but making sure you agree on song splits is incredibly, incredibly important, especially at the end of writing your song. We actually have a question in here um, from Robert asking if you should express uh, splits at the start of a relationship before the creation begins. And honestly, so much can change from the moment you write the song, you agree on that first set of splits. But if you include like a producer or you start adding more writers, like that share picture is going to change as you move along. So um, it is important to establish but it's also important to just make, you know, be flexible at the same time. Uh, Cause you know, who, who knows? Who's gonna get, who's gonna be on the song? Yeah, it can change. Um, amazing, amazing, Andrea. We are running low on time, but wow. Thank you so much. That was truly, truly incredible. I don't know if you have any last words or last things you want to mention uh, before we share some of the resources for everyone. Oh, gosh, no, thank you so much. I know I didn't really talk about some of the challenges of what do you do when there's hard feelings in the room and stuff like that. But again, I, I hope that idea of, you know, start strong. I think the whole win, create as much of a win-win attitude in the room and in everything you do as you can, you know, it's very reasonable to start writing a song and realize halfway through, like, you know, what? Well, this isn't going to make my next record this isn't going to be one of the best ones but you finish it for the relationship and you make sure that you diversify your career so that you're not clinging to any one um opportunity you've made for yourself as the one that has to work out because like you said things change things shift for the better sometimes you just don't know um so a very multi-pronged approach um, but start with understanding the value of what you bring so that you can 
find others who bring similar and um, and, and contrast, right? Complementary values to what you do. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, thank you. That was great. Those were some great last words. Um, so as a, a final uh, resource for y'all, if you have any questions on publishing, song trust, feel free to go to help.songtrust.com. Y'all see it on the screen. If you have any account questions and need help with specific items, feel free to email us at support at songtrust.com. Otherwise, definitely, I mean, Andrea, I don't know if you wanna give like your website, I don't know, let, let the people know where they can find you and, and follow up with you. Sure, for sure. Um, you can find me at andreastolpe.com. Um, that pretty much says it all, right? We've got a, uh, for better or for worse, I have a TikTok channel. I don't know what that's <laughs> all about, but anyway, <laughs> there it is. Um, so you'll know, be very happy if uh, anybody is interested in a uh, attending a songwriting retreat um, or there's some helpful articles and, and things like that on there too if you just want to stop by and get a uh, get a little little shot in the arm of, of writing excitement and tools. But I can't say enough about song trust you know to everybody there's there's a lot of companies out out there um, who who try to offer help but uh, Song Trust is an incredible company. You guys offer incredible resources, and I, I just want to say to anybody out there, um, you know, who's who's looking for um, a, a couple of good places to spend their time, this would definitely be one of them. Well, appreciate the double shout out there for sure. Um, thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you everyone for joining us. That was incredible. By the way, they were sharing each other's socials and emails to collaborate. So you've definitely inspired great. a group of people to get together. Oh, so great. Um, thank you again, everyone. Thank you thank guys. You so Good much, luck to everybody.